In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Cutout Studio in Digital Scrapbook Artist 2. First, have your photograph on your page, click on it to select it, and you'll notice the Cutout Studio button at the top of the screen. Click on it once, give it a second or two, and now you're in Cutout Studio. What I want to do is remove the background of this photograph. My current output type is listed as Vectored Crop Bitmap. What this means, it will apply a feathering effect to the edge of my photograph. It does not remove the background, which is fine because what that does, it allows me more control over what I want to keep or discard from my photo. The final result will look much better on a higher resolution and you can apply it to a plain or transparent background. If however you have a slower computer, it's going to take a little bit longer to render. Now in order to get rid of the background, you need to go to the top of the screen and just basically select your brush size. So there's small, medium, and then there's large. Over here is the actual size of your brush. You can press the arrow going up or the arrow going down to increase or decrease this number by increments of one. You can also pull down this tab and when you do you can move the slider to the right hand side to make your brush larger or to the left hand side to make it smaller and finally you can highlight this area type in the size of brush you want to use and press enter on your keyboard and it now becomes this size over here you want to check mark beside grow tolerance and currently my grow tolerance is listed as zero what that basically means it tells the software how much area around my brush is going to be removed from the image the lower the number the less is going to be removed with the grow tolerance of zero, the only thing that's going to be removed is the width of my brush. So if I hold my brush outside of my photograph, hold down my left mouse button, and just sort of go through this area, you can see that the parts that are being removed are no wider than the width of my brush. Currently, I'm in this mode here called Show Original. I'll go one under called Show Tinted, and you can see the tinted area now that has been removed. I'm going to click on Reset. This time I'm going to go back to my Grow Tolerance, I'll pull down this tab, and I'll slide it all the way to the right hand side so it's now at 100. Using the exact same brush size, I'm going to hold down my left mouse button and keep it down, and I'm just going to start drawing through this image. As I do that, you can see much more of the background has been removed. I'm just going to change my brush size to medium this time, and I'm just going to continue removing parts of this background. Now, at any time, if you accidentally made a mistake, for example, if I went like this and I removed part of the arm, I could easily go over here and click on the Keep Brush. I want to change my grow tolerance so it's not so high, and then all I want to do is start holding down the left mouse button and just putting that section back in. At any time, when you're in this area, you're going to notice that the green part is what the software keeps and the red part is what the software removes. You can now click on Preview and if you're looking at your transparent background and you're not happy with it, maybe it's a little hard on your eyes, you can go over here to Background Color, click on it once and you can pick any of these colors to change it to. For example, if you click on black, this is what it would look like. I'm actually going to go back to Transparency and what I want you to notice is the outline of this image. Let's say you don't want to look at it. You could go to the top of the screen, you could remove the check mark from Show Outline, and now you can see what your image would look like without the outline. I'm just going to put this back in, and paying attention to where my outline is, all I'm going to do is go over here to Inflate, and I'm going to move that over to the right hand side. When I click on Preview, you're going to see my original outline, and to the right of that, you're going to see a very large section of my background. Now this is kind of neat because you could use this as a mat if you wanted to, or if you don't really like this, you can go over to Inflate and you can drop it down. I'm using now minus nine. When I click on Preview, you can see the inside of my outline has parts of the sections removed from it. If you're happy with that, you can click on OK, or if you want to feather it a little bit, you can move the feather slider around, you can move the smoothness slider, maybe drop this a tiny bit and click on Preview, and you get a much softer look. Once you're happy, click on OK, and there's your photograph without the background. Now I'm going to zoom in on this section by going over here, clicking on the Zoom tool, and I'm just going to hold down my left mouse button and just drag a box around here. This way you can see what this photograph looks like. It's a very nice soft effect on the hair and it looks very natural. I'm going to go to this button here so I can see my page again and I'll click on select to turn off the zoom feature. Now I'm going to drag this photograph onto my page and click on Cutout Studio. 
This time I'm going to remove the background again using a grow tolerance of 100 and I'll just quickly go over here and just start removing the background. Now I'm going to go over to my output type and this time I'm going to change it to alpha edge bitmap. Now what that does, it will actually remove the background colors and the edges around the photograph have pixels so it's going to blend them into each other. It's going to go much quicker if you have a slower computer and the final result you can easily blend it in with other images or with other backgrounds. Now in order to actually fix this you'll definitely want to click on preview you can easily play with the width and the blur until you have an image that you like. Keep pressing preview after you play with these and then once you've done that you can do a couple of other things. You can fix this up a little bit. So if you have a wheel on your mouse press it in and move it away from you and your picture will get bigger. Press it in and move it towards you and your picture will get smaller. If you press in the wheel of your mouse you can move your image around if you do not have a wheel on your mouse, you can go right over here and using this slider you can drag it over to the right hand side to make your photo nice and big. You can also use the scroll bar to go up and you've got a scroll bar over here to go to the side. Over here you have two buttons that have now been activated. They only get activated when you click on the preview. This button is called the Restore Touch-Up Tool and this one is called the Erase Touch-Up Tool. When I click on the Erase Touch-Up Tool, you'll notice that the Grow Tolerance disappears and in its place we now have something called Hardness. If I drop this down and move this over to 100, and let's just say I hold down my left mouse button and just move down, you'll see it goes right through my photograph. That's because the Hardness is set at 100. I'm going to click on Undo and this time I'm going to drop it down to about 7. This time when I hold down my left mouse button and go through this image, you can hardly see anything that it's done. So I'll click on undo. Over here you can easily start removing parts of your sections. You'll also notice as you do that the original outline is still being shown. So go through your whole image and just fix it up nice and neat and at any time if you do a mistake you click on this button called the restore touch-up tool and you can restore whatever error you made. Let's pretend that I went through this whole image and I fixed up and did all my touch-ups. When I'm done I do not want to click on preview because if I do that I'll get this box. It says this will revert any changes made since pressing preview. Are you sure? The answer is no because if you say yes what's going to happen any of these features here that you've just corrected will disappear. So you click on no and you definitely when you're finished cleaning up all of your image you want to click on OK. Now I'm just going to show you what this looks like. Of course I didn't spend enough time cleaning it up but I'll click on this image and I'll mirror it by pressing on the flip button and then I'm just going to put these side by side. I'll go back to my zoom tool and I'm just going to zoom in to the hair. You can see with the vectored one it's a nice feathered soft effect and over here it's a little bit more choppy kind of as if I use this with scissors so that's basically all that there is. I'm going to click on select and this time I want to show you something else. Over here I've taken my vectored image and I've taken my alpha edged bitmap and what I've done is I've applied a mat to them. To do that, hold down the control key on your keyboard, hold down your left mouse button, keep it down and drag a copy to the side. Then you let go of your left mouse button, then you let go of your control key. Now with your copy it's very easy to create a mat. Just keep it selected, click on color. You want to send outline to the front, pick a color that you want to use, click on line, and then you're just going to increase the size of that. Now all you need to do is select your effect and then you can easily put that to the back of your photograph. With vectored though, you have to do it a little bit differently. Again, I'm just going to drag a copy, but this time I can't just apply an outline to it because nothing will happen. What I need to do is keep this selected, go to Tools at the top of the screen, click on Convert to Bitmap, leave everything the way that it is, make sure there's a check mark in both boxes, click on OK, give it a second or two to convert and then you can do the same thing that I just did down here. And finally, once you're finished, you can easily create your layout. That concludes this video. Thank you for watching.